Today we're doing something a little bit different on Coffee and Trains. We're building an entire new layout. Now, it's pretty small, but it's kind of cute. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Jimmy. Welcome to Coffee and Trains. Today just drinking some store brand coffee. Let me know what kind of coffee you are drinking in the comments and it might just be featured like these guys right here. And this is a special Coffee and Trains. I know typically my Coffee and Trains are more talking points, but I really wanted to do a little uh, Christmas layout thing and I found this and I really want to try this out. So this should be a little bit different but fun. Cheers guys. So yeah, if you haven't guessed it by now, this is Z-Scale. It's my first ever Z-Scale. And this is just a fun little layout that I decided to build one day. It's all contained right here. It's battery powered. Let's get into the build. We're starting this out with a Rokuhan Z Shorty Mini layout set. These are really cool. I picked this one up for about 60 bucks at Z-Track Center. And basically what it comes with is a little plastic base, some track, and a train car, and a tree. And it's very simple, very easy to do, and extremely compact because not only is it Z-Scale, but it's this Rokuhan Z Shorty, which is basically very compact locomotives. All you have to do to set this thing up is fold the backdrop in place and put a single AA battery underneath, and you are ready to go. We'll just put the little train car on the tracks, and all this has is forward reverse, no speed control, but we flip it to forward, and it's off. You will probably need to do a little bit of track cleaning on this. When I first ran it, it was a little bit jumpy. So that is the Rokuhan Z Shorty Mini layout. There's a couple different variants that kind of adjust in price, but this one was very, very affordable. I'll put a link to it in the description below, but let's get this thing turned into a little winter wonderland. The first thing we're going to do is cut off the backdrop. We do not need that for this project. So we're just gonna take some scissors and chop that right off. Then we're going to need to get ready to do some snow. And for the snow, I'm going to be using a product called Snowtex. Snowtex is just basically something you can paint on that looks like snow. You can put it on in pretty thick dollops to give it a little bit of uneven texture, more natural look as well. Now one thing I realized almost immediately when I started spreading this is I probably should mask off the edges and the controller. So I did that really quick, but use some masking tape around the edges and the controller before you start. Then I was off the races in spreading the snow text. Now I spread it around the outside first. I didn't want to work inside the track just yet. This is the first time I've used this product, so I wasn't quite sure about it, but it ended up working pretty well, but I just wanted to make sure it worked before I went inside the track. And you'll also notice that I'm not getting too close to the track. I'm going to use a different product for getting right on the rails, and I'll show you that in a bit. I then teased and pushed the snow text in place to get it exactly the way that I liked it. At this point, I was decided, yes, I'm going to go for the middle, but just getting it just right so it has some gentle rolling hill look to it. Now that I've worked up a little bit of confidence with this stuff, I started to put it in the middle. I wanted to build just barely the hint of a hill in the middle of this, just almost kind of like, I know this is silly, but a little bit of motivation for the train to go around it, then it was straight through it. I know it's just a loop of track, but that's just how it works in my head, but getting that little bitty hump right there. Okay, we've got some snow on this thing. It's time to really start making the scenery pop with some trees. These are chenille stems, also known as pipe cleaners. Now these are ones with a little bit of puff out, and they have about four little puffs per stick and what I'm going to do is cut them up and make them into pine trees. This is one of my favorite ways to make little background pine trees and it's really easy to put snow on them with this snow tech stuff. Now the first thing I do is I cut apart the little puff out sections into the four different trees per strand and I'm actually going to end up getting eight trees out of these in Z scale which is very very cost effective. I do this by cutting out the puff sections into two sections, but I don't do it evenly right down the middle so that I get different sized trees. To get the snow on the trees, I just take what's left on the brush that I use on my snow tech and just brush it upwards towards the top of the tree, and it gets just a nice little gentle coating, just a hint of it, nothing crazy. This is really just viewer's choice on this when you're doing this. The snow text has a lot of working time, so I'm just able to push these right into it and it'll dry right in there nice and hard. And then it's really just rinse and repeat until you get the right number of trees. Remember to vary that size a little bit, but you're just going to keep placing trees until you like what you see. Last but not least, we need to get some snow on those rails, and this is probably the most nerve-wracking part because uh, a lot can go wrong when you do this kind of thing, but 
I managed to make it work and it was actually pretty easy. This is some snow from Stonehaven Miniatures. You could also use something like Woodland Scenic Snow. This just came in a smaller container and I didn't really need much, but you're gonna spread this just like you would ballast. Now, the key thing here is that you're gonna get your track dirty and because of the, such the low voltages in this thing, it's gonna make it really easy for the train not to run. So the key is to get it nice and clear of the rails and then clean the rails and then it's still probably gonna be a little jumpy but just get that train running on there and that will clean it up. One thing that I found helpful was just using quick pulses for my Woodland Scenics scenery vacuum and this helped clear up the track. I also did dab and wipe down the rails very gently just to make sure I can get some clean contact points. Once that was done, I could put the train on and start testing and it did take a little bit of coaxing and coaching and more cleaning to get this done, but I did eventually get it running. And here is the finished result. Quick thing to note is that you may say, Jimmy, I didn't see you put any glue on the snow that you put on the rails. Well, you'd be correct. So what actually happened was a little bit of a happy accident. What happened was I actually sprayed the IPA to do the glue and have all the surface tension broken and soak in. But something happened, I had to walk away and I completely forgot about it and the IPA just kind of soaked in there and I said, you know what, I'll just take care of it in the morning. I came back the next morning, the snow techs had dried and to my surprise, the vast majority of the powdered snow had dried as well and was in place. So I don't know if the IPA caused it to attach to any of the snow techs, but basically it's all holding down in place and I'm kind of surprised. So um, if it becomes an issue, I will definitely um, put some glue on it, but I've shaken it pretty good and it hasn't come off. So uh, kind of a happy little accident there, but thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, I've got all the parts that you're going to need in the description below. It's a fun little project you can do with your family around the holidays. I really, really enjoyed it. My kids really like this too. Thank you so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee, and happy railroading.